strength and conditioning. We're also going to hear from some people that have had, you know, some people test positive and how they've handled that and some other issues that have gone on uh, to be able to um, share with you so that um, you in turn will uh, maybe not make the same mistakes that some of us um, have made. So again, thanks for joining us. Um, hope today is informative. We have a great panel. Um, I'll introduce those guys as we go just for the um, sake of time. Uh, but before we get started, we do have a couple of state sponsors that I want to recognize and I want to turn it over to uh, first to um, Todd Spears of Musco. Um, Todd um, is with us. We appreciate Todd's um, support of Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. And Todd, I'll shoot it to you for a minute. Well, I know there's a lot more important topic to address. Was, I'm getting some back feed. I hope it's okay. So anyway, I, first off, I appreciate everybody. I know that we're still working hard with a few of you to get football fields done and completed and lit before the season. Um, with, with all the things that are going on. Um, just wanted you to know a little bit about Musco. We've, we set protocol very early um, to try to, you know, we have three, three real pinnacles. Is, is, and one of the pinnacles of our organization is to create a healthy environment. And so we are striving every day to get feedback from everybody to make sure that not only the healthy environment is, is health-wise, but also uh, provide opportunities and, and make sure that everybody is treated fairly. And so we've gone to great extents within our organization to do both. In fact, um, in addition to keeping our production line open, we also uh, produced uh, PPP equipment and donated it to hospitals in Des Moines and, and throughout Iowa and, and also shipped it to whoever is, is needing it. So if there are any opportunities that you hear of that might need, let us know and we can try to assist anyway in, in that way because we, we really do take being a, a member of the community very seriously. Uh, one of the things that we rolled out, we rolled it out about two months early um, because of this, everybody was at home and so we were all able to educate our sales force and and our engineering team and so forth is we're we are right now uh rolling out a musco vision package and what is it's streaming it's a video streaming capabilities and i know that most of you have something for your football um what makes us a little unique is on baseball and softball we have we have actually two ca two camera positions one behind home plate and the other one out in the outfield and we're using not video and audio and um <clears throat> We're using, uh, oh, intelligence, um, automatic intelligence, AI, for uh, switching those cameras back and forth. And we have the, and there's also some audio. And the streamlining is Musco provides the paywall, Musco provides all the production, and the, and we are sharing revenues with the customer. 70% of the revenues go to the customer and 30% go to us. So it may be a way to help pay for itself, but what it's, it's really taken off because of the environment that we're in and it's it's really hit home so if anybody has any need or would like to discuss this more please let me know i know you guys have a lot of important things to talk about so i'll just let you guys go thank you again for all your support and we appreciate everybody Todd, thank you so much we appreciate your support as well we know this is a an unusual time for all of us and for you guys to hang in there with us while um, you know, we go through this pandemic um, is great, greatly appreciated. Um, also, um, today's uh, sponsoring this meeting is Jeff Altman from Whataburger. Hey, I'm a number four all the way. Um, Wada size it with a, with a Diet Coke. I'm not really sure where the Diet Coke comes in with all that, but that's me. Um, but, uh, and, I, and, I, and I, I've, been, I've been working really hard to not put on the COVID-15. You know, you have the freshman 15. There's also the COVID-15, so I've been trying to avoid that if I can, but um, we're gonna turn it, up, turn it over to Mr. Altman for today. Thank you, Thank you very much, we appreciate the support. Um, yeah, I've been hearing COVID-19 as well, so I think they've, that's, that's been ratcheted up a little bit, but, uh, but no, we, we, uh, we appreciate a, a few minutes today, and it's, it's good to see a few familiar faces on the screen here, uh, wish we could, I'll get together in, in, in July, but, but um, we're looking forward to, to the end of the year in December. Um, and I wanted to just take a couple minutes today to let you kind of know how we're doing. Um, you know, uh, we've been a 
supporter of, of Texas high school athletic directors for 13 years, for, for 13 years now, I believe. No, since 2013, I'm sorry. And um, we, we very much feel this is a, a partnership that um, allows us to, to have an audience and an outlet through the athletic directors and that feeds all the way down to the communities where we have a restaurant. So that's why it's so important to us. And you know, during this time, um, we've had to make a lot of adjustments just like everybody else over the last few months, um, particularly at the restaurant level. That's, that's where the focus has really been for us. Um, as you can imagine, our restaurants are our, our star players right now. You know, they're working the front lines to try to serve customers the best they can. And um, since about the middle of March, our dining rooms have been closed. Um, and about 35% of our business um, normally comes through the dining room. So that's 65% of our business in the drive throughs um, We're starting to slowly reopen dining rooms. We're not opening them all at once. Um, we're opening in waves as restaurants become available with safety in mind, first of all. Um, but that leaves other opportunities that we've been able to serve our customers. The drive throughs as you can imagine, have been busy and steady, and we're fortunate for that. That's probably closer to 90% of our business right now. Uh, but in the last few months, we've done quite a, quite a bit to try to look for other ways to serve customers. Um, our curbside service is something that a lot of restaurants have gone to, and that's really driven an opportunity for, uh, for people to order online through our app. And, and I'm, I haven't always been a big app user, but I've used it a lot more in the last few months. And I can tell you, it's, it's easy to use. Um, you know, it's, it's, there's offers going out weekly now for, for you know, buy one, get ones. Um, I can definitely tell you that if it's busy, um, and it's, it's a heavy lunch rush. You want to use that, that app and go pick up curbside. Uh, it's a, it's an easier way to get your, your, your food. We, we also just recently, and I think something came out in the newsletter a week or so ago, but we launched delivery. Um, that was something that we were not involved in with, a you know, a, as, as a contractual thing with third party vendors, but, um, we, our leadership really wanted to get into that quicker. And so it was on our, our dashboard, if you will, but they made it happen. And so that's now launched in all 10 of our, all 10 states that we're in. Gives us another platform to serve customers. So we're continuing to do what we can. Um, I know uh, many of you probably, you know, if you see our commercials, they always end with, thank goodness there's Whataburger. And uh, it makes me feel good about working for our company because we continue to get some great stories of people who are like, you know what, you're bringing some normalcy to my life. I can still get my number four. I can still go get my breakfast. Um, Wednesday nights are Whataburger nights in our family. We look forward to it. So, you know, working at home like most of you guys, that, that keeps me going, you know, when I see that because you feel sort of disconnected to the business. But um, our partners have been great throughout this process. Um, you know, we couldn't do it, with, if you think about it, without – without the ADs who have their coaches, who have their families, who have their kids, you know, um, and their student athletes that, that visit us, you know, weekly and are, and are continuing to go. So um, we appreciate everything that you guys are doing. Um, we're very much looking forward to hopefully the fall coming back in, in a little bit more of a normal way. Um, we we want to see high school football and high school athletics continue. We want to see, you know, people come to Waterbury on Friday nights and, and celebrate their wins with us. So that's what, that's what we're, we're moving towards, hopefully, all of us. Um, but we have to be nimble. And we, we have to, you know, be able to adjust. Um, so that's really what I wanted to just talk about today. Uh, um, you know, if, if there's ever anything that you guys need from us, you know, how to reach, you know, how to reach me through, through Dave and Rusty and the rest of the, the, rest of the team at, uh, at the THAS ADA. But, um, I know you guys have a lot to do today, but thanks, thanks for giving us some time. Um, we'll, as we like to say, we'll keep our, our W's uh, lit up and ready for you guys to come in anytime you're ready. Thank you so much, Jeff. I appreciate you and Todd both with the association. Again, we appreciate you guys sticking with us through this time. Hey, at some point we may need Whataburger to water-size their donation to us. So, um, <laughs> you know, we appreciate, we appreciate you guys. Um, uh, again, sticking with us through this um, this unusual time that we're all going through. Absolutely. So I'm going to uh, jump into the uh, meat of the um, content of the meeting. Um, and again, we're just kind of going to go around the horn. It's kind of informal. 
uh, and talk about, um, and as it pertains to strength and conditioning only at the moment, um, what kind of things are working for you? What kind of things, you know, uh, didn't work when you um, started the process, when you started your strength and conditioning programs? And then what adjustments have you had to make? What kind of things um, are you currently, um, you know, looking at closer and adjusting and processes, et cetera? So um, David Kirkendall, Frisco ISD, is going to start us off. David's got uh, 72 high schools and 148 middle schools, I think. So, uh, but he's a, from a very large district. And so, David, um, talk to us a little about what's going on um, with you guys in Frisco. Well, uh, thank you, Philip. It's, it's one of those situations, kind of like Philip alluded to a little bit, when you, you have 10 schools, there's uh, all varying degrees of understanding of what you're trying to get across. And you can zoom all you want to, but you really almost need to zoom to every single coach in the district because uh, if you're just zooming to the leadership, uh, some of those are better than others at getting the word across. And uh, to top it off, we have 10 schools and, and five of them are performance course and five of them are not. And so we're having uh, not really any issues there, but just different degrees of understanding what we're trying to get across. Um, I really tell you the truth, uh, Philip, we, the uh, strength and conditioning piece has been relatively smooth. You know, we, we, I go from really the beginning when we started out with the registration. Registration was the part that we were the most scared of. And uh, our trainers came up with uh, an RQ code that the kids come to practice every day and they sign in and, and answer some questions there. And uh, then they get the temperature and that's done every single day. And I thought that would be the biggest headache and it was the least headache that we've had. Uh, the other one uh, dealing mainly with strength conditioning, but everything as well, skills as well as sanitization. Uh, you know, that's a thing that I thought we would really struggle with, especially in the weight room, but uh, all the coaches have kind of got in the middle of it with some rags and wipes and sprays and everything you can think of on the bar and, and uh, the, the stuff that our hands touch. And so those were the two areas that probably from the get-go I was most worried about, but it seems to be that uh, they've, they've, they've gotten that point across fairly well. Uh, the one that I thought we didn't even really think about that much was the cohorts and the groupings and um, especially the uh, the the egress of when they're leaving. And I know everybody in here is the same way. We take so much forethought to make sure they stay X feet apart from each other coming in and getting into the weight room. But then when we leave the weight room or we go from one area to the other, then it's looks like a pack that's leaving out of a, an auditorium or something like that. And it doesn't matter how many times you tell those coaches to get them to spread out, they do that. I, we're like y'all probably in that I have three assistants and we, we go to each one of those campuses every day this last week. And every single one of them, it was the same concern and issue, which was the getting out of one space and going to the next space, going from the indoor facility to the field or whatever the case might be. So we continue to work on that. And uh, I'm fixing to have a Zoom this afternoon uh, with all of our coaches in the 10 and uh, they're going to hear an even more articulate version of what they should be doing and what the expectations are, because that's not happening right now. And uh, I know that we're not talking about skills right now, Philip, but just I'll give you a hint to what I'm going to say the next time if I get to. They're awful at skills as far as the uh, social uh, distancing and things like that. Uh, everything from when the break happens and, and or what in the heck they're getting in a huddle. A huddle is not social distancing. My gosh, that from the beginning, you've already messed it up. Then they're worrying, they're all worrying about more team stuff than they should be on those individual skills. And so again, I will, I will do a better job of articulating that to those folks so that when we get to skills, it'll be better. But as far as anything that I wish that we had done differently, um, I don't, I think that the plan that we had when they registered was good. I think the plan that we have for the sanitizing thing is good. Uh, I, uh, but again, I think the other end of it uh, with the, the, the cohort groups and, and come to find out we're one of those schools in the area that uh, I got a call yesterday that we had a, a little ninth grader at one of our campuses that tested positive. So we were in uh, hyper speed mode on Sunday trying to figure out what the next step was going to be and how it was going to work. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail other than 
we decided that uh, today at that campus was going to be a day off for everybody. So there's no strength and conditioning, no skills, no nothing. And that's given us a day, full day to figure out what the next step is going to be and making sure who the cohort groups with, who's going to be uh, asked to stay home per, uh, for 14 days, who's not. This was a kid that was in two skills groups. He was in a football skills group and a baseball skills group. So uh, one of those two, two sides did a better job of figuring out a cohort group than the other did. So when in doubt, they're all, a bunch of them are going to stay home. So instead of having a smaller group, we'll have a larger group stay home. Um, and then the only other thing I wanted to make a comment on, you know, the UIL uh, last week uh, made it where we could increase the size of our groups. In Frisco, we don't want the, the groups to be bigger. We want them to be smaller because if you have a positive, that helps you in your cohorts to figure out who needs to, to stand out and who doesn't need to stand down. And if it's too big a group, then you have 30 kids that are, are having to stay home for, for two weeks. So that's just a couple of things that are going on in my place. And um, thanks for letting me talk. Awesome. Great, great um, information. Uh, I love the comment about keeping everybody home for a day to give you some time to sort through that. Uh, nothing better than uh, creating time for yourself uh, to make the best decisions. So I think that is uh, great that you did that. Um, you know, obviously there, it's, there, there's different ways to do that, but in your case, you felt like that was the best thing for you. Uh, and I think that's awesome. So that's going to lead me into, uh, I'm going to let Kevin talk next because Kevin had um, you know, a positive test that um, caused them to have to react a little differently. And so he's got some really good um, information to share with how they handle it there. Um, but again, um, you know, to, uh, and again, piggybacking off of what David said, you know, in Mansfield, we did the same thing. You know, they've allowed you to open up and have groups that are bigger. Um, we said, we're not doing that this week. We're going to stick to the plan. Uh, and, you know, I think you're right. I think smaller groups is, is potentially maybe a better way to do it, but we're going to buy ourselves some time to give ourselves a week to kind of think through how we want to adapt to that change. So Kevin, I'm going to shoot it to you. All right. Thank you, Philip. And thank you, David, for being this good, good information. Um, I'm going to tell you guys the story that happened to us this week and um, tell you the, the teaching point right now, though. The teaching point is this. <clears throat> We can control all we want that happens on our campus. When the kids leave campus, we've got to be hounding them about um, not congregating in groups when they leave campus. And I'll tell you the story. Uh, we have two high schools in Burleson. They both started on Monday, strength and conditioning and skills. Uh, great turnout at both campuses. Uh, Monday night at one of our campuses, a uh, young man was killed in a car wreck. Coming back from playing sand volleyball with his teammates. Okay. Uh, Tuesday, we've made the decision um, to shut down at that one campus out of respect to, to the young man and his family. We made the decision just to cancel uh, for the rest of the week. A lot of, lot of hurt, a lot of people grieving. Wednesday night at the campus, um, we had over a thousand people in a student organized vigil show up. And Thursday, Friday morning, excuse me, Friday morning, first thing, we got notified from a parent um, that we had a positive test. We went immediately through our protocol to the city. Uh, public health director, the county health director, so on and so forth. What a result from that is we made the decision to shut down both high schools and junior highs for this week so that they could process the contact tracing. What's interesting is the contact tracing did not go to Monday. They only went back to Wednesday, the vigil. And so the student who tested positive, his family had to supply names of people that he was in close contact, which is defined as uh, six feet or less for more than 15 minutes. And that's the process that the, the city's going through right now 
is the contact tracing and contacting those individuals who he came into close proximity. Those individuals have to quarantine for 14 days. Our first fear was that we were all, everybody at the vigil was gonna have to quarantine for 14 days. And that doesn't appear to be the case. We're waiting on word back from the city and county health folks to tell us when we can restart. Just out of precaution, we've said this this week, like I said, at both high schools, both junior highs, which the junior high kids were coming to the high schools, um, we're, we're not gonna practice this week. We're targeting Monday if they can get the contact tracing uh, complete. The proximity, um, the reason they didn't go back to Monday, they said 48 hours from the event to the positive test is what they use as the window for the contact tracing. So uh, we did a good job on Monday. Our coaches did a very good job of organizing the groups. We had all that information ready. Uh, we, we thought when we got the positive information on Friday, the positive test information, we thought we were gonna have to quarantine the groups from going back to Monday, and that was not the case. Okay, very good. Um, anything else you'd like to add that, that worked for you guys um, that didn't work, obviously, or that um, like, like your communication to um, everybody once you had uh, the positive test and you had to shut it down? I mean, that went smooth. I mean, that was what, what process did you use for that? Uh, we used our district communication department. We had everything kind of already pre, uh, pre written, if you will. Um, so it was pretty seamless. Just we did a in just in case type scenario and what our protocols would be. The biggest issue I think that that I personally dealt with uh, the parent. Um, they were very concerned about. We didn't release the student's name or any identifying information. We didn't even say an athlete. We just said a, a high school student, and. I guess through the contact tracing, because they have to call and say if you were, you know, were you within six feet of Philip O'Neill for 15 minutes or more, and that, you know, that process of elimination, they were able to determine who the student was. And I think the dad, um, it wasn't upset. I think it just overwhelmed them with the people checking on the young man and then calling and seeing if they need to be quarantined and things like that. And we really had to over communicate that no, not everyone at the vigil has to has to quarantine as of right now. And not everybody who went through strength and conditioning has to quarantine. They're only going after the small group of individuals who are identified in the, in the, prox the close proximity. Um, over communicating that, there was a lot of confusion, I think, on social media. I think trying to control that, which you can't, I don't think you can control that. It's, you know, we have people who are saying we're shut down for at least 14 days, which is not, hopefully not the case. Like I said, we're trying to target Monday to get back on, on the field. Um, the other thing we, we've dealt with a little bit, which is just minor, is uh, our kids pay for the camp, the summer camp. And I've had a couple, they want their money back for, for this week. <laughs> you know, and it's, so I, I can kind of understand that, but that's, that's another, um, you know, administrative thing that we didn't we didn't take into account. Very good, Kevin. Thanks so much for sharing that with us. That's um, really good. Some of some of the rest of us may be confronted with that um, in future weeks, and so we'll be able to draw from what you've shared to um, hopefully um, have a seamless process as well. So I'm going to shoot it to Sean Pratt. Sean um, has another story about a student who showed up um, with some symptoms. So I'm going to let Sean. Um, share what he wants to share about working, not working, um, you know, et cetera, with changes that have made and then how they handled that particular process with the, with the, with the show. Yeah, so I, sorry. Uh, so we had one show up last Thursday, had a fever and a cough, had three of the symptoms. Um, and so obviously sent that student home, but also sent his, his uh, workout slash skills group of nine uh, home also and the coach that had been coaching that group home um, we were fortunate we we got a call yesterday and his parent also said well that makes sense because he was exposed to a uncle who's positive etc cetera, etc cetera. but uh, 
anyway, he, we were fortunate Sunday, yesterday, we got word back from his test um, that it was negative. Uh, so we are going to be returning uh, those kids. And he, he was symptom free Friday, Saturday, and Sunday too. So we returned those kids and returned the coach um, for today and, and, and back to normal. So, but everything overall has gone well. I think um, I, with the, the biggest adjustment we made, and I know not everybody's made this, I don't think everybody has, has an agreement with it, but when the UIL adjusted the wording on the, the bar, having to clean the bar after every lift, because um, I really felt like that was for or show anyway, wiping that bar down, not to mention the amount of paper towels, et cetera, that we were compiling. Um, we, we quit wiping it after every lift. Um, we added a couple hand sanitizer stations to the weight room. We actually have them hitting the hand sanitizer when they finish lifting before they get back on the bar and trying to, you know, our, our philosophy is if they got clean hands when they hit the bar, there's no need to wipe it after every one. So, and that's, that's helped us a little bit in the efficiency of, of that piece. But other than that, same problems Coach K talked about, you know, when, when they leave, they tend to get together. It's funny, we go through all this and then you watch them get in the car and eight of them pile into a little bitty car together to leave. And it's, it's like, you know, it's all for naught anyway. But Coach K, I would, I'd like to be a, a, on that Zoom call. You got, your, you got a little fired up earlier. And you meet with your your coordinators today. Uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty uh, mild mannered, uh, but when you repeat the same thing for the last month and it isn't happening, you kind of got to change your approach a little bit. I think. So. Yes, sir. Yeah, everybody's motivated in a little bit different way, aren't they? And sometimes you got to push a different button for sure. Um, awesome. So I'm going to shoot it over to uh, Becky. So what makes Becky a little bit uh, different than the crowd is that she's at a one high school town. Uh, and that she has an athletic training background. So Becky, um, share with us a little bit, make sure you um, pull it off, take it off mute, and then share with us um, um, what, uh, what's been going on with you and, and the things that, the uh, adjustments that you've had to make and the things that have worked as well. Uh, thank you, Philip, and hello, everybody. Um, I am unique because we have a one horse town, and I will tell you that, that there are a lot of blessings to that. Um, I think the thing that I would say that we made our most adjustment on is we did use the QR codes. Uh, we, we changed some of the uh, entry and exit um, example. We had the coach on both the entry and exit and then we would go look at it and the coach might change during the day because of numbers. So we just put it on the outside so that we could track it. The other thing we do with our QR codes that I think some people thought were maybe a little bit over kill is that our coaches register when they go inside any other building so that we know what cohorts are together in that building in case we do have a positive we can certainly track where those kids are so I think that's the biggest thing is just think about you know if something doesn't work right don't be scared to change it as long as you stay within the guidelines that we have and um, I, I think the second thing that I would say is kind of echo what Sean said. We, we actually took our weight room and moved it from the existing weight room because the square footage was very small and put it on one side of our indoor facility, which allowed us to put 20 racks up and we can keep our same kids on the same rack. So we clean the racks after every group, not after every individual kid. And that, that has helped us tremendously when we did that. I think those are the major things that, that we changed that have helped us. Very good. Um, excellent, excellent um, advice. Don't be afraid to change. Uh, great advice. So, um, so I'm going to, uh, Joel, Chris, Leslie, do y'all have anything that you would like to add to what's already been said? And um, if you do, please jump in. And if you don't, um, um, if you do, then then please share it. And if um, when you get done, then I'm going to start with you guys on um, the individual workouts. You know how how that's going, what's working, what's not, what changes you've made to that. So, Chris, looks like you may have something. Well, I don't know that I have anything different. Um, I, I'm extremely proud of our coaches and staff. And and uh, you know, obviously, the month before any of this all went down, the the numerous meetings we had, um, just for our coaches and staff to be able to put it all into implementation and 
um, certainly not knowing what was going to happen necessarily the first day, hoping they knew what was going to go on. But um, just the adjustments they were able to make, they started the week without uh, the forehead temperature gauges. They did get those in, so the lines went way down. But originally they adjusted and, and just had kids come earlier uh, for check-in. And then the way they've, they've uh, made a couple of different sessions has allowed for, for us to be able to handle the numbers that we've had. I've been extremely pleased. Um, we've had, I would say, at least 90% or better of, of what we thought we would have this summer. So really proud that we've been able to handle that. Um, we did the QR code as well. Uh, I think that's been one thing that's helped our group. Uh, but really, I don't know that I've got anything much more than, than what the others have shared. Hey, Philip, I will talk about a little challenge we ran into today, if you don't mind. So we, we just, uh, and this just maybe for the group that maybe thinking like I have been thinking or really not being a very good leader like I haven't been and paying attention to the rules and guidelines and trying to adjust to the TEA guidelines and the UIL guidelines. I don't, I'm, I'm not used to the TEA part of it if, if some of you are like me, but um, we started, we started strength and conditioning last week with high school students only and uh, echo everybody else's comments on our plans and all the meetings that we had and all the protocols we put in place. And we had a really good week, high school kids only last week, everything went pretty smooth. And then today we hit a bump in the road. We opened up for middle school kids and uh, we use performance course at all three of our campuses. And um, one of our campuses, we turned away 42 incoming seventh graders because they didn't have a physical. And uh, probably not the best communication on our part to those parents. And um, <clears throat> so we are up until 10 minutes prior to this uh, Zoom meeting here, we were trying to communicate with parents and let them know that they were gonna have to have a physical. And one of the comments that got brought up was why didn't a, well, a sixth grader doesn't have to have one, but a seventh grader does and then a comment got brought up that so well, you're you're using performance course so it's a third party person and not your own coaches so they really don't have to have a a uh, physical so um i did reach out to coach elsa and i did get in touch with her about 20 minutes before we jumped on this and i mean that is the that is the rule number one is that all seventh graders before they do strength and conditioning have to have a physical whether it's a third party or not in case you're like me and did not realize that. And then the other thing is um, TEA is only open for us, only opened our facilities for incoming seven through 12. So that answered my question about sixth graders. So any of you that are using performance course and have sixth graders uh, in your groups, um, we're, we're contacting PCs, contacting those groups today and telling them that they can't, they can't be there. It's only income seven through 12. So, just an area on my on my oversight on TEA guidelines that I just kind of let slip through the cracks. Sean, I really appreciate you sharing that with us. Um, it's important to be able to share those things that maybe didn't work and didn't go the way we wanted to, and maybe some, um, you know, some pitfalls that we ran into. So I appreciate there may be some others out there that are dealing with the same thing. So Leslie, I'm going to start with you then on the next topic of the individual sports. Um, camps that um, coaches are having. Um, tell us what's working, what's not working, adjustments that you've had to make, et cetera, as you go through that, and then we'll have some others speak on it as well. Okay, thanks, Philip. Uh, good to see everyone, and thanks everyone for tuning in. I think it's great that we can share our ideas and thoughts and, and learn from each other. It's going pretty well for us as far as the uh, sports specific skill training. One challenge, and we anticipated it, we knew it would be a challenge, so we tried to get in front of it. We have construction going on at uh, Lake Highlands High School, so we can't use those gyms. So basketball and volleyball training has to go to a junior high. So the coaches doing that training are having to make sure they screen the kids because not all of our kids, you can't force a kid to go to strength and conditioning and it's completely off site. So one thing that we're making sure that our coaches realize instead of the area coordinator is not there checking in, these kids that are doing just sports specific, especially when it's off campus because of construction. So making sure our coaches understand the importance of the QR code and taking the temperature. And I just think it's a communication piece that's important. Whereas at one high school, 
like I watched it this morning, the softball kids get there at Pierce High School, they, they get screened at the same place strength and conditioning gets screened and they just walk around the corner uh, to the softball field. So that's a little bit of a challenge. So I, I would say that make sure if, if you're gonna allow your coaches um, to screen kids for skills and it looks, if it make sure it's consistent and if it is gonna look different than strength and conditioning, just make sure you communicate that. I think we, I think we need to over communicate our expectations with our coaches. Fantastic. Um, Chris, you want to jump in and talk a little bit about how it's going with your individual? Sure. Sports stuff? Um, yeah, right now, for the most part, we've limited our individual sports skills to our returners. And um, we've not done anything with, with some of those that um, would be new to the program just yet. We're trying to get a couple of weeks in uh, to really get things figured out before we start that with, with some of those that will be new to programs. So, um, I think that's helped us really in terms of numbers and, and the coaches being able to get things situated the, the way they want. Um, one thing that's been really tough for us um, on both, both issues has been the, uh, the ability for our custodial staff to help us out. Um, I don't know how that's worked for you guys at some of your places, but um, we've got uh, a little bit of a, a tough thing to overcome in terms of the, the folks that oversee our custodians and they've put them on a tight, tight line to uh, get things ready for the school year. And, and uh, our guys have had to work real hard to talk with them and, and get them at certain times into a weight room or into a gym to, to help with some of the, the things in terms of disinfecting and that kind of thing. So um, I think they've promised lunches and breakfasts or brought donuts and that kind of thing to some custodians. But that was one thing that uh, I thought, you know, ought to be a, a pretty easy deal to handle. Those guys are there every day, just like our guys are. And we weren't asking for much other than maybe a couple of days to help help with some things. But um, our coaches have had to take that along with everything else as well. I don't know if anybody else has experienced something similar to that or not. Awesome. Uh, Becky, what about you? One Horse Town, you guys um, share kids probably um, as much or more than the rest of us do. And so... How's that going? Well, Philip, uh, we did not start our strength and conditioning and I mean our sports specific until today. Uh, and we actually only the fall sports started today, their choice. Our spring sports are gonna not start until uh, after the July 4th week. So softball, baseballs, though, they're, they're not even starting. So we're kind of getting a little bit of a break because we're getting to basketballs, volleyballs. That all went well today. I'll echo what um, Leslie said about documentation. But again, I was able to, which I think is, is just a positive of where I am, we were actually able, had a big enough room, we were able to have face-to-face -face meeting, and I had all coaches in there distance six feet apart but uh, we got to have face to face to go over all our protocols and, and I just do think that that was um, a much better way uh, and then we had each of our uh, sports specific they had to um, write a protocol that they were going to use and send to me but we were consistent in using the same QR codes and the same questions and the same release statements on each one of them so uh, I think that consistency helped us a lot. And today we had no issues. We had, we had good um, strength and conditioning. We added our junior high today. And then our, our sports specific went really well today. The sharing of the kids is a little difficult, uh, but that's where I think um, every time they go into a building yeah. and anytime they switch from strength and conditioning and then they get through, they have to re-enroll in their sports specific so we know what coach they're with at that time. So just some little things we did, but um, it's gone well. Very good. Um, anybody else um, have anything they'd like to add to that? Sports specific, how that's going, anything they're doing different, any adaptations they've had to make? How um, successful are you guys being with social distancing when they're in gyms? Um, are you um, limiting numbers, um, Coach Kirkendall, are y'all limiting the numbers of um, people in the gym at a time? I mean, how are you doing that? Yeah, I, I think they are. I've, I've been to a couple of campuses where the volleyballs are obviously a different area than the basketball. They come at different times of the day. That's one of the things that's helped spread that out and that space out a little bit is 
a lot of times coaches all want to come up there and use the gym at the same time. Well, we've made sure that that's not the case. So there's plenty of room to operate in there. Um, you know, uh, it, one of the things that I was going to kind of tag off of Becky right there a little bit, it's not about spacing or anything like that, but we're really trying to figure out uh, whether we're going to going to do the, the middle, uh, the, the middle school skills or not. We're having so much problem with our high school skills and especially with the social distance distancing and the high school skill people that uh, we, we, we're struggling right now to figure out whether we, because there are, our middle schools are not doing it right now I've, and they're not even going to start trying to do it until June 22nd. So we still got another week to figure this out. But uh, I, I just, I can imagine it's like herding cats anyway, when those middle schoolers are around to begin with and then trying to do some skills on social distancing, I'm a little bit concerned about, but um, no, Philip, our, our problem with the social distancing is not in the gym. It's uh, outdoors, and uh, it doesn't make any sense because there's more room outdoors, and yet sometimes our guys seem to want to group everybody together, and, you know, so sometimes if we're not careful, we might even see somebody at the, at the end of a session. Uh, everybody comes up, and he's going to talk to them. What in the heck is that all about? You're going to have to have them spread out all over, get a, uh, a conch and, and megaphone there and talk to the kids. You don't have to have them all crowd around you, so – Again, it's uh, it's probably uh, a, a, the AD's not doing a very good his job very well because he's not getting the point across. So uh, we we've got to do a better job of that, mainly outside, but uh, and then keep up what good we're doing on the inside. Listen, we all know better than that about you. So Leslie, yeah, I was going to say, David, you're not alone. So Kevin and I go to our four campuses every day, and we see the same thing. When there's a visual and you have a cone, and they get there, and you tell the kid to stay on the cone, it works. Yep. But when they, when they transfer from the indoor facility to the outdoor field or to the weight room, they're, it's like herding cattle. And, you, mm -hmm. and you're constantly, we're saying, coach, you need to get those kids spread apart, you know. And it's just, it, it's a daily battle. Um, and when they leave and watch them go to their cars, same thing. That, that, I think we're all having those concerns. And uh, the cones are a great visual uh, but like I said, you can't, when you're transferring from one place to the other, that's the issue. It's not when they're lining up to get checked in. So we're seeing the same thing. Same thing for us, exact same issue. Um, we're trying to make sure that our kids social distance, you know, when it's, when, when they're supposed to and what the, and, and all the time and it's not happening all the time. So anybody else have anything they'd like to chime in, jump in, anything in addition to what's already been said pertaining to individual workouts. So I want to close out with what kind of things are you guys planning for, for, um, you know, the beginning of school year? What is it that you're planning for now? Um, what kind of forethoughts are you having as it pertains to moving forward? You know, Sean, if you don't mind, I'd like to start with you because you talked the other day about um, having your kid, having a testing system to test your kids for COVID-19. I've been trying to wrap my brain around that. What's the benefit of that? You know, what is it that, um, you know, is the rationale for doing that? So can you share that with us? Well, uh, yeah, so we, we have been talking to a, a third party group that will provide uh, the antibody test for $16 a piece. And we're going to be offering that to our student athletes um, and, and some of our faculty that just since I've been talking about it said they're interested. Um, so we're going to have kind of a streamlined process for kids that got to be tested that we that come up with symptoms or any faculty that want to be tested. But then late July, um, we've got a date for each high school. We're going to test as many as possible with the, the thought being that if, if you have the antibodies and, and somebody comes up positive as we start school or start practice for volleyball, cross country and football that you kind of know who's been exposed already, right? And so that um, hopefully you don't have to remove those kids. I, you know, I don't know that to be a fact yet either, but um, yeah, so that's kind of what, what it is. You're muted, Philip. What else are you planning for? Well, just, I mean, I'm on it's the usual. On Dr. McDaniel's task force for return to school, which you know, that's been interesting. We're working on all these different scenarios from a, you know, full-time back to a hybrid model to all virtual. I mean, all these different plans because, we, you know, obviously we don't know from the TEA enough 
uh, information yet to know what we're going to have to do. But um, and I know he's talking with all the area superintendents and Frisco and Prosper and Plano and Richardson, all these will right here in our little area. Um, are all visiting with each other about, about their ideas. So we'll see where we end up. Josh Kay, what about you? Well, it's, it's funny you're bringing that up. Uh, we had a good conversation during lunch um, with Grace and Jerry and Chris. Uh, Grace had uh, just taken a call from Amy Foreman, who is the our contact over at the Star, uh, where you you know we play some of our games over there. And so we've started a conversation of what it's going to look like if you could only have 50% of the stadium used, uh, and and uh, what would that would look like, and you know how you would sell the seats, and you know, obviously the seats have to be assigned. We're a little bit different over here in that we we play in three different stadiums, so. Um, obviously, over there at the, the Ford Center, you can do that pretty easily, just like we did uh, over at Toyota, because that's where we had graduation, and we gave out tickets, assigned seats where people could sit. And uh, over here at Memorial, the, the high school field that we still play a third of our games at, we don't have any uh, numbers on there because they washed off about 15 years ago. So we're going to have to figure out how to get back in there. And then just uh, the ticketing process, what that's going to look like, uh, if that's the case, I, I'm sure y'all are a little bit like me when you you hear rumors of the uh, the pro teams uh, coming back in, in front of 50 percent, and and sometimes the college say that as well, 50 percent. I don't see high school coming back with 100 percent if that's kind of what they're talking about now with the college of pros. So we kind of started that conversation right there. The the, the one thing that I, we haven't talked to anybody about. I don't know the solution is the the transportation piece of uh, of kids you know uh, just for instance the Allen taking its band anywhere that would be uh, 50 buses if you had did it according to how many people are in the buses so that's another little piece down the road there that uh, everybody's going to have to have to look at but uh, now we talked a little bit today uh, Philip about uh, just the, the stadiums and how what that would look like and the ticketing and things like that no, Coach K, I just say me and Johnny Ringo and John King, has, we started meeting last week through Zoom and just kind of, kind of coming up with different uh, DEC policies that we're going to propose depending on what, you know, if you're at 25 percent or 50 percent. Because you're right, if you go 25 percent and you start trying to take care of the the players and the coaches' families, and then you talk about the home band and their family, well, that's a thousand right there. Um, so we started kind of setting some uh, policies that we're going to propose to the DEC based on what percentage we get back. Very good. Anybody else planning for something different than what's been discussed already? Yeah. Leslie? So, um, I'm on the task force as well, and I can tell you that what we've talked about, and I'm, I'm fortunate that uh, a task force that met uh, like a subcommittee brought back uh, some just recommendations for secondary about what it could look like if we did like an A-B day. And thankfully, what came back was athletics and fine arts would meet every day. And so that's something that's so important that if you've not had that conversation with your superintendent or deputy or an assistant, I would encourage you to have that conversation because we're fighting for that and you know it, it still would be a challenge because the model we have right now if we have an ab day you would have athletics first period and athletics last period and that's going to be really tight with facilities and you've got we, we're concerned that kids may have to choose uh, for one year but we want fine arts and athletics every single day but be ready to figure out are kids really going to have to choose or are we willing to let kids come just after school uh, or just before school to do some fine arts and some athletics. These kids that are in, taking an AP art class, they sing in the choir and they play volleyball, can they really do all three uh, with the model that your district is proposing? So a lot to think about, um, but it's a moving target. The rules change every day and, you know, TEA is supposed to come out with something this week and anxious to see what they roll out this week that could change what we think we may have in place as far as a draft. Very good. And we're doing the same in Mansfield. We're looking at um, AB Day. We're looking at, you know, 100% virtual. Um, Dawn's leading one of those uh, to talk through what that looks like. Tammy's leading the other. 
Uh, they're doing an incredible job with making sure they represent us to ensure that we maximize, you know, opportunities for kids in athletics. So um, we're doing the same. Anybody else have anything they'd like to add? Anybody? Okay, well, um, I, I just got a text a few minutes ago from Chuck Lincoln in Crowley. He said that Ezekiel Elliott has now tested positive for COVID-19. And um, so it sounds like uh, there's a, a large group of Cowboys and maybe Houston Texans that have um, tested positive. So it doesn't just uh, obviously affect us. It's, it's non-discriminatory uh, in that regard. It doesn't matter who you are or what level you're on, um, they're dealing with it. And so uh, I, I can't say enough about how much I appreciate um, the group that's, um, that's on this particular Zoom uh, and, and, the group, and, and the people that aren't on on here um, on the panel um, and the professionalism that, that you guys have handled all this with. Again, I think we're all very proud of our coaches. I think we're all proud of our kids. I think there's some improving to do and I think there's going to be some bumps in the road. Um, some of us have already experienced some of those and some of us are going to experience those. I believe that's coming for, you know, some other people. Uh, but again, um, you know, thank you guys for what you're doing and leading uh, North Texas in particular in doing the best we can to keep our kids safe and doing the best we can to um, continue with um, athletics at whatever level we can at the moment. Um, thanks for, for being advocates for that, and, I, and I'm grateful. Um, Bob, anybody have any questions? Any, any questions come across today of anybody that had anything that um, we needed to address? I've got, Philip, I've got three things that came across um, the chat room and one in the question area, and I'll go ahead and ask them. Um, just for the panel, how many of you are considering um, live streaming, even if Roddy doesn't work with the UIL, are you going to provide streaming um, of your athletic events? I'm seeing most of the hands go up. Yeah, it looks pretty unanimous. Joel, are you doing that? Chris, yes, it's unanimous. That will, everybody. That'll be on the agenda for tomorrow and uh, Wednesday with let's say council, because um, we're going to consider whether or not to do that on Fridays also. Can I expand um, on that question a little bit? Um, sure. what, what platform are you guys using? We're using NFHS Network. Um, is anybody else, raise your hand if that's what you're doing. Okay, Leslie, Chris, Perkendall, Frisco. Okay, what, uh, and Joel, um, what other platforms are you guys using or considering using? Sean, what are you doing? I don't know the name of the platform, uh, Philip, but I, uh, our broadcast journalism teacher's helping me and he's got a, He's just, I don't, I don't even know the name of it. Okay. Okay. Himself and he's got a, he's got a little black magic box is what he's <laughs> Y'all heard earlier. He's using the magic, the magic box network. I, I like it. I like it. You heard earlier that um, Todd Spears and Musco are going to pr provide a uh, system similar to what uh, NFHS offers. Okay. Uh, second one, second question, this is really for Sean. Sean, you talked about the possibility of a $16 test made available to your student athletes through a third party. Are you are you at a point where you can share the name of that company or would you prefer not to at this point? You know, I'd be happy to if he's okay with me doing that. I, um, so right now, probably not, but give me uh, give me 24 hours. I'm, I'm going to meet with him again in the morning. And if he's okay with that, I'll be happy to share with everybody. All right. Uh, last question I have. Um, this had to do with a football game. Do you guys think that we're going to be required to count the people actually on the field as a as players or officials in our um, in our count for what our stadium can hold? We were not in our conversations, but I'm sure we're going to be told whether we do or not. Yeah. Okay. That's all I had, Philip. When you're ready, I've got a few a few uh, comments to make, but I'll let you go ahead and say whatever you have left. No, why don't you go ahead? I, again, thanks to the panel for their insightful information today. Hopefully some people picked up on some stuff they're going to be able to utilize uh, moving forward, and um, we'll do this some more as we go. I'll just um, echo some of the things that uh, a lot of y'all had said today. This is, uh, we belong to an incredibly talented fraternity of athletic directors across the state, and Region 3 being one we're talking to today. Um, the fact that you're willing to share the trials and tribulations, the successes and the failures and the challenges is, is pretty incredible. If you think, 
if I'm a basketball coach or a football coach or a volleyball coach, I don't always want to share my inner secrets with my, um, with my colleagues. But in our world, that's part of what makes us successful because we're willing to do those things. So thanks to you guys for doing that today. Um, this has been incredibly beneficial, not only to Region 3, but if you watch the chat room, we have people from around the state that were listening in at different times of the, uh, the meeting. Um, I think our high was around 160, but I bet we were close to 200 people that were in and out throughout the, uh, throughout the hour. A um, couple of updates for you guys, and then I'll let you guys go. But as you know, we moved our state conference from July until December, and those dates are December 8th through the 11th. It'll be the exact same four-day footprint that we had in July, just different dates. Um, Hall of Honor is going to be on Thursday, golf's going to be I mean, on, on Wednesday, and golf's going to be on uh, Thursday. Um, the hotel situation, we've been, we've been very lucky. Our three main ones, the Hilton, the Courtyard, and the Indigo, have all moved your rooms from the days, corresponding days from July until December. We're waiting to hear from the other hotels if they're going to do that with us also. So for some reason, you're not able to attend the conference in December, and if you're at the, one of those three hotels, you have to call and change that reservation. Um, like we mentioned a minute ago, tomorrow and Wednesday, is Wednesday Council. Um, we won't have anything that's going to really affect us in athletics until 1 o'clock tomorrow, and then at 9 on Wednesday for policy, and then the full council at 11. I think you can look for the uh, two biggies are going to be the, uh, the live streaming on Friday nights, and also the amendment to 1204, uh, amending the sub-bar city basketball pay. And then there will be discussion. There'll be old business, but it'll, it'll discuss whether or not to consider additional compensation for 21-22 or the consideration of a long-range plan for officials' compensation. So that'll be some pretty spirited discussion in light of the fact that we are all hearing that 21-22 and the year after that are going to be pretty tight financially, even worse than the year you're about to experience. A um, couple advertisements, Summer Roundtable will be on Thursday at 10 o'clock, and that will be kind of a synopsis of what we, what we learn tomorrow and Wednesday from Council, and also we'll have some THSADA updates on that too. That'll be hosted by uh, Pat Cohan for Clell Wade, but it'll be predominantly uh, Texas um, ISD athletic directors who will be doing the roundtable. And then last thing I have for you guys today is um, – a lot of great resources today, but if you go on our website, a lot of you and others around the state have provided video content for things that you're doing uh, regarding the keeping kids and your coaches safe. So if you want somewhere else to go to, for a resource, be sure to go to our website and check that out. So that's all I have for you guys. Um, thank you all so much. Philip, I'll let you close it out.